Hello, in this video I'm going to explain Interior CAD's new framed front feature. Let's uh, double click the cabinet and have a look at the front. I've already added a plain left hinge door there and as you can see there's a third option there now which allows you to switch between the plain and frame front. And if I switch it to frame you get an another menu there which will allow you to add a frame front uh, or actually load a preset which you need to define yourself. Um, I've, I've already done these for myself so this will, won't be populated when you first install it so you need to uh, configure that. So let's let's see how that, how that works. You go to edit and um, you get a new frame design dialog and uh, as with all interior cab dialogues you have a, a, an interactive panel on the right and a, a detail pane on the left. So let's just quickly go through all the options and see what they do. Now the first option here is the menu where you save the actual set. So you can see it's already there. Uh, just uh, press save and as a new, nice new addition, you can now change or delete these um, and add them, add them back with a different name or with different, uh, with the same name and different options. So it's a lot easier to manage your styles. You don't need to go to the user folder. You can do it from this dialog. The next option is the joint for the corners. So this could be a butted joint or this could be a counter profile joint. And also we've added the options for a continuous style or rail and also for the mitre, which you can in theory do for each corner separately. Not that you want to, but you can if you if you have to. So the next option is if you, instead of making that frame, uh, you want to send off for it, um, you want all the order details in a nice list that you can print out or email away, you can just switch this on to bought in and add your options for the, uh, the frame description, the supplier, ID and price. And then that'll be entered into the costing as well. And also you can send off for it and have it delivered instead of making that for yourself. Okay, so the next option here will save what you do to each frame member. So if I select this this style there, then I can design that, that style and whatever I do to it can, can be saved. So that's a, sort of a sub set to the, to the main set for the whole frame. And uh, this will be separate for the styles and rails. So if you add something for style there, um, it's not going to be available for the rails so you have to to use a different set there we've kept that separate um, the next one is to turn the style or rail on or off and this one will uh, give you some nice new options to um, have an arched or cathedral style uh, style or rail now this will be um, something that you might use for a draw uh, left and right um, so let's go back to plane there um, we'll have another detailed look at the um, the arched and cathedral options for the rail there. But first of all, let's uh, see what these do, these profile options. Um, you can't just have uh, plain uh, styles or rails, but you can apply the new profiles. There's another video on the profiles coming up, uh, which will explain how those work. So they work for, the, the profiles work for uh, standalone uh, custom parts, as well as uh, cabinet uh, um, custom parts, custom parts that are nested within the cabinet and also for the frame you can set profiles and they're applied automatically for the inside or the outside of the frame. Now let's see how that works. Just uh, open the uh, library browser there and you can see there's already some um, profiles available. These generic just fillets or chamfers and these are actual router tools that we've uh, provided so you can use the actual router geometry and obviously you can either change these or add your own um, as you as you go along so let's just uh, pick that so that's going to be applied to this uh, this uh, style and uh, just to the outside so there's a little nice little button there so instead of repeating this step for for all of the frame members you can just click that button and then as you can see this is applied to all the other frame members so that saves you a bit of time hopefully now the next one is the inner profile and that's a bit more interesting because um, remember that we've chosen the counter profile option there so that will be uh, a slightly more uh, this this will have more options now than if you'd set this to 
the Jack Mitre. So this will give you the positive and negative or the male and female options for the, 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 the corner joints. Now there's one thing you need to know, we can't really hide any options there. And um, it, it might be a little bit confusing because you, you, you can see the male and the female there. And um, you have this one marked with a C and just note that you don't actually ever use this. This is applied by Interior CAD automatically, but Vectorworks doesn't let us hide it. So you can, you can ignore the, the ones that are marked with a C. These are the counter profiles. They get applied automatically. So just choose the, the profile that you want for the inside. And you can see there's already uh, a groove there, which is um, basically to fit the, the panel um, between the, the frame members. So that's the next option that we can see here. This is already set to inner profile, so you don't need to do anything there. So that's, that's already done via the profile there. Um, if you have plain frames, you can choose any of these options. So you can have a dadoed or a rabbited joint there for the or uh, uptake there for the for the panel, or you can have the panel laid on or laid on, uh, well laid on in the front or laid on in the back. Um, that's a bit of a special option. It's sometimes used for for glass fronts where you have a a coated glass, well, at least the, the, the edges edges would be coated and then uh, glued onto the frame. That's just a special way of uh, making frames. Some some joineries like to do it that way. It looks kind of modern and we, we, we have full support for that. So anyway, that's the that's the inner profile. Let's just save that. So that's saved. So that's the whole that's the whole frame frame done. And um, let's just have a quick look at what this looks like. I haven't done the panel yet, so that should be an empty an empty frame. And there we go. So um, it's not really showing us the profiles because I haven't enabled the 3D details. And if I do, it takes a little while for it to generate. So if you if you you know when you're doing your construction, you might want to leave this off until it gets applied because um, it, it's just faster to do it without the details. But you can see the profiles. It looks you know, it's rather nice. Have all the details there and you can see the counter profile there. So that's really that's really nice. As I said, we don't have the, the panel yet, or it's a, it's a plain, it's a, just a default panel there. And uh, obviously we might want to have this raised and also we might, might want to um, add that uh, cathedral detail to the, uh, to the top rail there. So let's see how that works. Um, let's go back to the front division and um, select that door there, go to edit, and just first of all, select the top rail there. And let's set this to arch. That's now an arched, an arched top rail. And we can give that a little more width to accommodate for the, for the arch there. And you can see, you can set this to um, have a straight bit first. So if I set this to 50, I get a straight bit and that'll also apply for the cathedral type um, curve there. So may may want to leave that at 20. That's probably enough there. So that's really nice. You can, you, you know, you can um, configure the height and the, the offset and the, the frame width. So hopefully that will give you enough options to create your own, you know, country style designs for your kitchens. Um, doors and drawers. Okay, so um, I think all that's left is to have a look at the panel. And the, the, as I said, it's a default standard panel now, which will use the default width that's been set in the construction tab of that dialog. So if that's set to 19 or, you know, depending on where you are in the world, it could be 18 or 16. Uh, 19 is probably a little, mu a little bit much for the, um, for, the, for the panel. So let's go and go ahead and change that to something thinner. So um, I, I'm, I'm using a, a plain oak now. That's a that's sort of a solid wood now. So um, that's not going to that's not going to match my my styles and rails. But uh, I have another uh, nice little feature up my sleeve, which, which I'm not going to keep from you. So um, I'm going to change all my frame elements to solid wood in a minute and show you what happens with the uh, grain direction and the render works texture mapping. So let's just start with the, the panel there. So that's now solid wood and you can see that I've still got a white finishing on there, which I'm going to get rid of. So um, I'll see the oak texture uh, later on on the panel. And um, let's also go ahead and change this to raised. And as for the 
the, the frame members, you can see that you are given a, uh, the option to uh, apply some routers there to that raised panel. And you just click the router and, and it will follow the curve and the, the edge of the frame automatically. You can actually change the position of that router by changing it um, with respect to the symbol input uh, or the symbol insertion point in the symbol definition. So if you want to change your um, the uh, the distance between the, the the routing proper and the frame, you can just move this left and right and top to bottom to change the the way that or the position that the routing is applied to the to the panel so if you if 12 is too thin you might want to um, move this down a little bit or change it or change the thickness hope that makes sense um, if not let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll make another video on uh, on how to do that so yeah as I said um, just change that to solid wood um, we could go ahead actually and and um, find the frame style and rail there and change that to to solid wood as well uh, let's remember to get rid of that well I could just get rid of the the texture there I could leave the primer and the, and the coating uh, and uh, leave that to a class custom part you don't need to delete that you can have it and still um, have the texture ignored so that's just a sort of the brute force method that I'm that I'm using now um, so as I said just set this to class custom part. Let's do this in fact for the frame rails and then see what happens. Well, hopefully that should give us a, a nice wooden front and let's let's see what it does. So there you go. So um, the the detail I wanted to, to just discuss briefly is that we've managed to make the grain direction go all the way through to treat this as a, as a solid piece of wood. So there's no one key texture mapping there it looks really nice with the continuous grain there and obviously the the grain direction on the frames as well um, that should look really good in rendering also as a, as a detail if you have plain fronts and you have several fronts on one larger cabinet um, we made sure that the grain will run uh, continuously through all the fronts and it's not going to start in the top left or bottom left corner of each front so hopefully that will look really good in your renders as well so that's all for the frames uh let me know in the comments if you need any more information and um yeah as i say i'm sorry i have to say this make sure you like and subscribe to you know spread the word um thanks for watching and uh, see you next time cheers